Hi guys, welcome to another video. Today I like to talk about the topic on whether there is an oversupply of housing in Singapore. This is a heavy topic which I have took quite a while to do the research and also involved in statistics and figures to finish this video. So I hope I can cover as much as possible and at the same time to sum it up together so that you can understand it easier. So before we go into oversupply of housing, first of all, we need to know that our Singapore do not have natural resources. And in order for our nation to progress and grow, we need productivity growth to stay relevant and competitive in the global scale. And that will be our workforce, which is our human resources. So what do I mean by that? Which means, if our people grow, our workforce will grow. And when our workforce grow, our productivity will grow. And our nation will progress. And that is why we need our people to grow, which is our population. So, there was a proposal of a population white paper in 2013, and it sparked controversial among our citizens. However, the paper also had forecast our citizen population is heading towards a downwards decline. Partially, it is due to the falling birth rates despite various efforts. And also because of our aging population, where majority of our working Singaporeans in the workforce are actually entering into their retirement age. And therefore, the numbers of working age Singaporeans uh, will decrease tremendously. And this will affect the work workforce growth significantly. And that is why we need the population growth. But although the population white paper estimated 6.9 million in 2030, however, based on 2019 statistics, uh, our population growth was only 1.2%. And the residence growth was only 0.8% from the previous year. So it's a total of 5.7 million population we have. 4.03 million are Singapore residents and 1.68 million are non-residents. And among the 4.03 million residents, are only 3.5 million are Singaporean and 530,000 are Singapore permanent residents which is relatively a slow growth rate to reach 6.9 million in 2030. And in this year itself, uh, our population may also fall below 6 million. Therefore, it was expected that our population will be below 6.9 by 2030, said by our minister before. So with the slow population growth rate, the question is, do we still need to have so much housing? Will there be an oversupply? Especially HDB is still continuously building new BTOs, plus the supply in the resale market and EC, and not forgetting the private residential market as well, and the new launches. No doubt about it. I agree that there's definitely vacancy unit currently. But if we look at the positive side, uh, it's also mean to help maintaining an uh, affordable price. Ma. But if we look into property is what? Property is for long term, not short term. Because short term will be a speculation, which is a so-called a risk factor. Therefore, I believe for property, you have to look in long term time frame. And this is why the vacancy units could be a uh, temporary which means a short term. Because if we allow the current residence project in the pipeline to be completed and taking our slow growth rate, we can accommodate the population by then. The units can be taken up. But this does not factor in the immigrants coming to Singapore as well, huh? which may also help in terms of our workforce growth. Besides that, the current statistic of the total numbers of uh, residents dwelling in Singapore shows there is an estimated of 
1.18 million HDB was built and an estimate of 317,730 private residential and the 74,914 was landed and in terms of our residence household 90.4% are home ownership with 78.6% stay in HDB 16.2% in the private residential and 5% in the landed property which which means what? Which is equate to approximately 7,866 people per square kilometer of land area in the population density. Furthermore, land scarcity will still pose a challenge for future development and infrastructure, which was mentioned in my previous video. Although our Singapore had increased its land area, to the current size of approximately 725 square kilometer through land reclamation. However, Singapore proximity to Malaysia and the rural island in Indonesia effectively limit the available area for reclamation to its marine time borders. Therefore, the need of population growth with the limited land is can be a great challenge to maintain a moderate population density in our modern Singapore urban landscape and build up area. That is why urban planning is important to make sure the effectiveness use of land and maintaining a livable density for our residents. However, I believe our government has been doing their utmost, utmost best in maintaining between the supply of land and the demand of housing to sustain the quality of life that our citizens are used to with but at the same time to also sustain our nation progression moving ahead towards a global smart city aspiration and to SG100 so this will come to the end of my video and I would like to thank you this customer who raised these questions to me it's, it's not easy and this coming 19 will, will be our opening of phase 2 and I believe everybody is supposed to be very excited about it. So I hope you have learned something from this video and please like, share and subscribe to my channel if you like this contents. And comment below if you like to ask a question. I will do my best to answer your question in the next video. So I will see you in the next video. As always, stay safe and take care.